I'd like to formally welcome you all here, but also try and take a few minutes to talk about the whole essence of what the Economic Summit is about and the things that we have done and almost recap so that we have some form of continuity from where we left off last year. Just over a year ago, we were all gathered in this hall to evaluate our position as a group with a common objective, which was to seek ways to continuously improve the quality of life of every Nigerian. At the last summit, we focused on the need to reach out to the global community for foreign direct investment through global partnerships. Indeed, that was a theme of NEST 17. At that gathering, we came up with clear recommendations arising from our joint effort. And in line with the commitment of Mr. President, our proposals were presented to the Federal Executive Council to encourage government to play its part by implementing those recommendations which it found acceptable. It is notable that no objections were raised against any of the suggestions that were made at that time. Also during the last summit, we acknowledged and commended the ambitious roadmaps prepared by some ministries, setting clear direction for their future and creating a foundation for their scorecards. In our submission, members of the NESG and the whole team of the NSG membership offered to assist other ministers to prepare similar roadmaps, not, just, not so much to interfere in government's role, as was unfortunately perceived by some, but to support government in producing robust strategies that accommodate the private sector in the spirit of public-private partnership. The offer we made, though not taken up at that time, still stands. So what were the main outcomes of NEST 17? We should take a few minutes to look at this. Economists have always suggested that a developing country like ours needs a huge national project to jumpstart its economic development. A national project in which significant part of the population can be engaged and many more receive the benefits rapidly. The summit of 2011 recommended the implementation of a massive integrated road and rail infrastructure and development program across the whole country. This was to serve as our huge national project, very similar to the strategy adopted by President Roosevelt of the United States after the Second World War. This not only galvanized the American nation, but also created a common sense of purpose which revitalized the economy of the United States through building a network of roads nationwide just after the Second World War. Whilst this huge national project recommendation was acknowledged by government, the reality in execution, unfortunately, does not even begin to scratch the surface of our expectations, and certainly not at the scale that can meet the intention of using this initiative to jumpstart the Nigerian economy. We had hoped that this integrated road, rail, and even to a certain extent, gas pipeline grid production would create jobs massively opening up the economy physically, decongesting our distribution system, giving access to all parts of the country, supporting physical trade, facilitating the movement of our agricultural produce, and so triggering a rapid physical systemic impact on the economic and social activities of the country. In response to the theme of NEST 17, we must commend the various ministries, many ministries, including the Ministries of Agriculture, Trade and Investment, and Foreign Affairs, who along with all the other ministries and even state governments have encouraged foreign investment drives. They made tireless international trips around the world, including Mr. President and Mr. Vice President, in search of investment partners with our foreign missions receiving and facilitating the movement of our people across the international boundaries. The Nigeria Economic Summit Group also has been very active in this foreign direct investment drive by working with various foreign missions at home and abroad, including the United States, China, Canada, South Korea, South Africa, the European Union, and even as far away as Australia, and even Rwanda, covering such sectors as agriculture, infrastructure, manufacturing, power, oil and gas, and things of that nature. The data on the inflow of foreign direct investment shows that there has been a positive outcome to our recommendation of an aggressive, proactive push to seek foreign direct investment 
by increasing the visibility of investment opportunities in Nigeria. In our submission last year also, we made it very clear to Mr. President, as is the case with other leaders around the world, that his key performance indicator is the number of jobs that is created in the economy and the resultant number of people that are gainfully employed on a continuous basis. To this end, we encourage the government to revisit and implement the job creation report that Aliko Dangote team headed, a report which was geared to create jobs in the hundreds of thousands, not only for our young people sitting at home doing nothing, but even the very many adults that have families to look after. We do not believe that enough initiatives, though many have been made, but not enough have been made to provide enough jobs to dignify the aspirations of our youth. The implementation of our recommendation for a national skills needs assessment to meet our 2020-20 aspiration remains outstanding. So last year, the members of the 17th Economic Summit also wanted to see the full deregulation of the downstream petroleum sector. They wanted to see the PIB put to bed. They wanted to see the renegotiation of our deep sea production sharing contracts, which hitherto had been found to be unfavorable, although still negotiable. The summit wanted to see the completion of the deregulation of the power sector. They sought for the conclusion of the privatization of the railways and wanted to see our initiated road construction projects completed. All these at a level that will visibly impact the nation's economy. That was about last year's position. 2012 started on a very, very rough note for the Nigerian economy, with a collective lockdown by the nation of a magnitude never witnessed in civilian times. And it all centered around the issue of deregulation of the downstream petroleum sector. But in its wake, it educated and aroused the nation's awareness of petroleum subsidy issues. It helped to identify the main players in this subsidy game and started the process of turning off the tap of corruption that surrounded it. At the moment, the jury is still out on how that past is going to be cleaned up. However, in the midst of all this, another major issue was brought to the fore, which forms the second aspect of our theme at this year's summit, and that is cost of governance. Whilst the summit last year had serious issues about the cost of governance in absolute and relative terms, value for money governance was also recognized as an additional challenge. The introduction of a performance management paradigm is now becoming a new way of life for our ministers at the federal level, the benefit of which we are still to witness through the rewards and sanctions that become applicable for performance. We wait on the state governments to take a cue from this federal initiative. The current reality surrounding the cost of managing this country presents a situation where about three million or so people that work for the federal, states, and local governments, not forgetting the legislature, consume about 70% of the annual budget on salaries, allowances, overheads, while the rest of the 160 million odd Nigerians depend on the balance of the 30% to provide the infrastructure, education, health, and other services which most governments have a responsibility to provide. The cost of managing our economy is larger than its productive output. Our oil revenue is giving us all a false sense of productive achievement. The size of a government must be in line with the size of the economy it has to manage. We are using a sledgehammer to kill an ant. This is a very sensitive issue simply because this model. We all have to fix this problem faster than we are currently addressing it. To say corruption is an acknowledged problem in Nigeria would be a major understatement. The leading international opinion survey organization, Gallup, declared that Nigeria is perceived as the second most corrupt nation in the world in 2012. That was Gallup's opinion. People's perception is their reality. Unfortunately, this perception seems like a reality. We see it around us every day. We have to fix this problem of corruption because it will consume us all.